many people want a history lesson? I got a history lesson. I want to give you a three, <clears throat> I want to kind of update a history lesson here. Because there's, there's a, a Ray Kroc, there's a Sam Walton, and then there's this new crew of PC that are coming on. Okay? Let me go, now let's look at what Ray Kroc did. Ray Kroc took an industry. Ray Kroc took franchising an industry. And so here's this big industry, and it's kind of a whole bunch of cowboys. There's all kinds of different people, and most of the people in franchising were only interested in making a quick buck at somebody else's expense. They'd sell you a franchise for $25,000, $100,000. They'd get their money up front, and they'd pretty much say, good luck. And so franchising was a cowboy operation. It came within just a few votes of getting outlawed at one point. And then enter Ray Kroc. And he takes franchise and everybody criticized, oh, I heard all about that. Man, didn't the government almost close that down? Blah, 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 blah. And he takes a, at the time, a, a 19 cent hamburger. And he starts saying, no, it's not about making money on the front end. It's about getting someone started in their own business and helping them become successful. If we help the franchise owner make money over the long haul, even if we just make pennies on their dollars, they become extremely successful. They will be very loyal to McDonald's and will make money as well. Does that sound familiar? They actually, he actually thought, crazy thought in the 1950s, win-win. And he wiped out, I mean, he basically franchising, the whole model changed because uh, Ray cracked this. The old model went away and franchising today, everybody thinks systematically, you better help. If someone buys a franchise, it better be successful because there's plenty of other opportunities they can get into franchising. The only problem with franchising for us, if you were anything like me when I got started, Lori and I got started, we didn't have, we were so broke we couldn't even pay attention. I mean, this was tough times. There's no way we were having 100000 or more dollars for franchising. And so they, they offer a business opportunity for people who already have money. How many people like me were a little short of the 100 some thousand dollars of spare change, you know? If I had that, I wouldn't have a problem in the first place, you know? So that, even though it's great, I'm glad what Ray Crack did. Certainly learned a lot of great principles from him. Not my cup of tea. Then you got Sam Walton, who, in my opinion, is the greatest leader of the 20th century. Sam Walton, in 1992, near his death, he knew he was dying of bone cancer. In 1992, he writes a book and he says, by the year 2000, we will be a $100 billion company. Now, who in their right mind, when a company's 20-some billion dollars, not even 20 billion at the time, predicts that his company is going to be a hundred billion even though he's not going to make it through the year. That's someone who understands systems, trim tab thinking. He understood what was going on, he understood where they're, and he had created such a leadership team that it would last longer. Sam Walton revolutionized retailing. Big box store wasn't the same. There were lots of people that are out of business today that got into retailing. Man, pile it high and sell it cheap. That was the motto, and everybody was doing it until Sam Walton came in and said, we're gonna do it, but we're gonna do it better than anybody's ever done it before. And started from this little, I mean, you take a look at the companies that started the same year, the same year that he starts Walmart, the, um, <clears throat> big companies, Kresge, Kmart starts, Target starts, I mean, we're, uh, Woolco starts. We're talking big names with billions of dollars backing them starts. And here comes little Sam Walton with no money, borrows everything, has to put a mortgage on his house just to get started. Who in 1952 would have said Walmart's going to kick all their butts? Who would have said it? None of us. If you would have, you would have bought some stock. You'd be doing pretty good, even with what happened today. But... Um, But here's the thing. Now let's take a look at the field of networking. Networking is this big, let's put this big, and there's all kinds. There's some good companies, there's some crazy companies, there's all kinds of stuff. Networking today is like franchising was when Ray Kroc entered that scene. There's some good, there's some bad, but really 
It's all about making their money up front and owners becoming billionaires and everybody else trying real hard. What if we did it a little differently? In fact, what if we didn't just take a look at networking? What if we took another big circle, another big profession? What if we took this leadership profession, whether it be life coaching, leadership, and networking? What if we combined, what if we intersected those two together and just say hypothetically, what if two of the top 15 leadership gurus got together and then combine that with another group of five to six leaders that will be in the top leadership gurus. Tim Marks is in the middle of writing his first book that I can't wait to be able to read. And what if we literally created a leadership, and you see, let's just look at the leadership field. The leadership field is where a few people make a lot of money and everybody else gets to learn from them. And man, I am all for people learning leadership. Whether you made any money or not, you ought to be pounding, listening, and learning. Man, I read as many books as I can. I know that everything rises and falls on leadership. But what if we married the best of leadership? Instead of having a few guys making, I mean, there's one guy in leadership that made $100 million in one year while everybody who bought his stuff was fired up because they bought his stuff, but they made nothing from doing it. Listen to this. Do you think that instead of one guy making $100 million, what if we produced a billion dollar new industry and we split a billion dollars together while we learn leadership, while we win on everything, what if we revolutionized the networking field with the leadership field, combined those things together, made you guys millionaires, instead of having a few billionaires, what if we all become millionaires? Anybody in? No. No. Now let's back up. Let's back up. Ray Kroc's success made that family billionaires. Uh, they own the San Diego Padres. They own all this real estate. They own all of these stores. They became billionaires. But what was the purpose? What was the long-term thing that he said, man, when I died, I sold more hamburgers. I, you won't believe the increase in cholesterol. I was a personally, you know, what was the long-term purpose? Not knocking McDonald's, but the concept is begin with the end in mind. No matter how good it was, it's still a hamburger and fries. Well, what about Sam Walton? Man, you can buy it cheap. Well, I appreciate a good deal as much as the next guy, but isn't there something more to life than just buying it cheap? A good deal. If we do what I'm proposing, if we marry, and we're going to, when we marry, the best in networking and the best of leadership together, we don't just change one profession, we change two professions. We literally, every single competitor will have to respond to what we're doing just as every single competitor had to respond to Sam Walton and every single competitor had to respond to Ray Kroc. You are in the middle of making history. You are making history. Now, what if, instead of, the average company builds a business and makes money. Great companies build a business and have a purpose. We're the first company ever that's building a purpose on a business. Because I know, just like George said earlier, I know when we start talking about we're really, you know what? If it was only about making another 10 million or 100 million, I'd probably pass. And I'll tell you why. Because building something at this level and taking the time and all the PC helping, it's a lot of work. But when I think about where we stand as a country, I sure am thankful that George Washington didn't say, you know, I've got all this land, I've got a lot of money. This revolution thing sounds like a lot of work. I sure am glad that somewhere back in time when the Woodward family headed over to the New World, they didn't say, man, that sounds like a lot of work. You see, when you start to understand that, yes, you're going to make a lot of money, that, yes, you are going to revolutionize a couple of uh, industries, and we're going to make changes on a scale 
in our country. But what we're really going to do is we're the new educational system for America that's affordable to the masses. There isn't anybody in here, there isn't anybody in here to say, oh, $50, I'm out. Because even if you said, I can't even afford $50, Orrin, then I would tell you, then to go out and get three customers so yours is free. Nobody, nobody in leadership is giving their material away for free if you just go refer a few more people. You know, we say, Warren, what are you doing? I mean, that's a dumb business model. Not if you understand the purpose. If you understand, here's what, here's what I'm saying. Every other leadership guru I know, every other one, to come speak to a meeting like this, it's $25,000. This is a $100 ticket for you tonight. You just had, you've just had two of the top 15 leadership gurus. How much did you pay tonight? $10? Absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. Orrin, you are really screwed up in your business model. <laughs> yeah, isn't it cool? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I'm beginning, beginning with the end of mine. Here's what I believe. Here's what I know to be true. I know that people like Dan and Lisa, people like Tim and Amy, people like Chris and Terry, they weren't going to drop $2,500 for weekends that you read. You go check out what these, they are selling to the classes. They're going after the people with big bucks and they're teaching the better to get better. While the masses continue to struggle and nobody seems to remember to help your neighbor. And they can criticize me all day long, but here's what I figured out. That Orrin Woodward had no chance. I had no money to get the right information. And somebody handed me a crazy few. They handed me a shoebox full of tapes. You have to hear the story yourself. Craziest thing. I only listened to a few because I wanted my baseball cards back. Boy, those baseball cards have been real valuable to me. I still have them. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is you have just been given an opportunity to get as good of information as people are going to pay 10, 15, 20 times or more for the same information. And if you say, man, I'm so busted, I can't even afford that $50 orange, then what I'll tell you is that then you go find three customers, and that's coming in just a few months. When we launch this baby, we're going to go to a million people so quick. You know what the constraint on our business is going to be? Trying to teach people how quick. Hey, okay, the opens are on Tuesday. Well, I got a 50 people. What do I do? You take them to an open. Oh, when is it? Tuesday night. Yeah, that'll really help. That's so foreign because some of us have been in a while and we think, it, oh man, you're going to have all kinds of time to learn leadership. No, the constraint's going to be trying to teach people leadership. People are going to have 200, 300 people in their group and not even understand the basics of how to win friends and influence people. <laughs> understand? Is that a book? Right? Man, you ought to be taking the top five books and pounding through them now. Like Claude said at the major, don't wait. When the wave, you can see the wave, it's too late. You got to start paddling. If you're surfing, you got to start paddling ahead of the wave. The wave's already here, but you start paddling now and you're going to catch a really good one. Okay? And you can go, you, there'll be people in this room that have a thousand people on your team like that. And everything you buy from this system, because we, the way we created the structured, the compensation plan, Everybody in this room, because of the team approach, you hold your spot, you recommend a few people, we're going to get you to the 50% bracket so quick, which means everything you buy from then on is 50% off for the rest of your stinking life. <laughs> crazy. Absolutely crazy. There's going, to be, there's going to be people that are making $100 million, that were making $100 million say, uh, we only made $2 million this year. Yeah, because that stinking life thing, they changed the deal on us. <laughs> Everybody's going over their life. They're living intentionally for excellence. Well, how are we going to do that? And you know what? They'll never be able to duplicate us. They'll never. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why they'll never do it. Because no matter all the network. Oh, we're just like so-and-so, only better. Oh, yeah? Who else has Chris Brady? Yeah. Oh, yeah? You're, you're, just, you're just like life, only better, huh? 
Oh yeah, well do you have 10 marks in your system? No, no. You're just like life. Do you have George Gazzardo? I don't think so. Do you have Bill Lewis? You got Claude Hamilton? Do they have you? Listen, we are creating a movement. We're creating a movement of people who are sick and tired of being sick and tired. The masses have been abused, the masses have been ignored, and the masses have been forgotten. Well, life is our opportunity to tell us, you wrote us off, but we didn't write ourselves off. And if you won't fix the country, we will right now. Right now. We're doing it. We're building purpose. We're getting this thing done. One million people. It's coming, baby. Five years. One million people. Are you with me? Thank you.